Columbia, Houston, uh, the computer is yours and you can do your verb 45 enter now. Roger, going to block and verb 45 enter. Uh, Roger. How's the black team today? All primed and ready to go? Uh, you betcha there, uh, Mike. This is Apollo Control, some uh, 5 minutes 35 seconds away from loss of signal with the spacecraft Columbia before it goes on the far side of the moon in the 24th revolution. 1 hour 18 minutes until ascent ignition and following uh, that the rendezvous sequence consum uh, completed with the docking at 128 hours approximately. We'll continue to monitor air ground here as uh, the data is passed up to the crew for the upcoming day's activities. Apollo Control standing by at 123 hours and 3 minutes. Have Columbia Houston, about three minutes to LOS, and I have your consumables update. Ready, copy. Oh, Roger, at uh, one, two, three, plus zero, zero. RCS total, minus seven percent. Alpha, minus one, two percent. Bravo, plus four point five. Charlie. 
minus 7, delta minus 6.5. Your hydrogen total, minus 1.4 pounds, oxygen, oxygen plus 1.7. Over. However, figured those hydrogens and oxygens out a couple days ago. I must have known what he was doing. Okay, I think I read that oxygen. It's a plus 17 pounds. All right. Still closed. Roger. Eagle and uh, Columbia, this is the backup crew. Our congratulations to yesterday's performance and our prayers are with you for the rendezvous. Over. Thank you, Jim. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Glad to have uh, all you big room for the people looking over our shoulders. We had a lot of help down there, Jim. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal with Columbia going behind the moon toward the end of that pass. Apollo 11 backup commander Jim Lovell, who's had some experience in lunar missions, came up with his uh, congratulations for a job well done and mentioned that he would be here giving moral support during the rendezvous sequence to follow. There will likely be further communications with Eagle until uh, the command module comes around the corner again some 44 minutes from now. We'll bring the circuit back up as communications resume, perhaps playing catch up with tape recordings. And at 123 hours, 10 minutes, ground elapsed time, one hour, 11 minutes to ignition. This is Apollo standby. We may be, let's listen in again. Well, let me give you a 
few comments with regard to the geology question of last night. We are uh, landed in a relatively smooth crater field of uh, a long gauge secondary uh, circular secondary craters, uh, most of which have rims irrespective of their raised rims irrespective of their size. That's not universally true. There, there are a few uh, the smaller craters around which do not have a discernible rim. The uh, ground mass throughout the area is uh, a very fine sand to a silt. Uh, and I'd say the uh, thing that would be most like it uh, on Earth is uh, powdered graphite. Uh, immersed in uh, this ground mass are uh, a wide variety of uh, rock shapes, sizes, textures, uh, rounded and angular, uh, uh, many with uh, varying consistencies. As I said, I've seen uh, plain, what looked to be plain basalt and uh, particular basalt, others uh, with no uh, crystals, uh, some with small white phenocris, maybe uh, one to less than five percent. And uh, the both, we are in a boulder field uh, where the boulders uh, range generally up to two feet with a few larger than that. Now, some of the boulders are lying on top of the surface, some are partially exposed, and some are just barely exposed. And uh, in our traverse around on the surface, uh, and particularly working with the scoop, we run into uh, boulders uh, below the surface that has probably buried under uh, several inches of the ground mass. Sign quality use and uh, Roger, very fine description. Now I suspect this boulder field uh, may have some of its origin with this large, uh, sharp edge, blocky rim crater that we passed over in final descent. Now yesterday I said that was about the size of a football field and it, I have to admit it was a little a little hard to, to measure uh, coming in, but I thought uh, that it might just fit in the Astrodome as we came by it. And the rocks in the vicinity of the uh, of this blocky rim crater are much larger than these in this area, some uh, uh, 10 feet or so, and uh, perhaps bigger. And uh, they are very thickly populated out to about one crater diameter uh, beyond the crater rim. Beyond that, there's some uh, diminishing, and uh, even out in this area, the uh, the blocks uh, seem to uh, run out in in rows with irregular patterns, and then there are paths between them where there are considerably less uh, surface evidence of uh, hard rocks. Over. Yeah, uh, Tranquility Base, Houston. Uh, we copy. Thank you very much. And Tranquility Base, uh, we're through with arranging. You can take your S-band function switch to off reset. Roger. And Tranquility, I have a uh, LEM consumables uh, update for you. Roger, ready to copy. Okay, at uh, one, two, three, uh, plus zero, zero, RCS Alpha. 7, 8, 78 percent, PQMD. Bravo is 7, 6 percent, PQMD. Descent uh, O2 is 6, 2 percent, 62 percent. Descent amper hours are 590, 590 remaining. Ascent amper hours or five seven four five hundred and seventy four remaining over. Roger.
Roger, copy. Sounds very good, thank you. Uh, Roger. Tranquility Base, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Ah, Roger, uh, for your uh, P-57 arrow, uh, we did a little looking around, and it looks like uh, Sirius and Rigel out of Detent 6 uh, would be real good on that. Uh, the sun angle on Sirius is about 43 degrees, and on Rigel it's about 55 degrees. Over. Houston. The only trouble is that uh, the sun is in uh, number five, the closed one, and it appears to also uh, be close enough to uh, D106 to uh, shine on the far side of the uh, cone, and uh, it completely obscures uh, D106. I'm, I'm unable to use that at all. Okay, uh, we understand it now. Thank you.
High Tranquility, Houston, uh, for your information, uh, the circuitry looks uh, real fine on that Athlon engine arm circuit breaker. Roger, uh, I don't think I could get it out now if I wanted to. Uh, Roger, we copy. And it looks like in D-10-6, I can, uh, I can pick up Venus right at the fringe, but uh, I can't get anything else. Uh, Roger. And by the way, Houston, our EVA antenna did retract. Ah, uh, Roger, mighty fine, thank you. Uh, Tranquility, uh, Houston. Roger, go ahead. Uh, Roger, it uh, looks like you're going to have to reposition the radar here. Uh, we suggest you may want to start your uh, TIG minus 45 uh, minute uh, point in the checklist at about uh, TIG minus 50, over. Uh, Roger, why do you think I need to uh, move the radar? Well, uh, we thought that uh, you probably wouldn't be able to get the star there. On the rear defense, the uh, radar can be pointing plus X, and I'm, I'll be using uh, right rear. That's okay. Uh, Roger, that's fine. This is Apollo Control, some 57 minutes, 22 seconds away from ignition on the limb ascent back into lunar orbit. Some 30 minutes away from acquisition of the spacecraft Columbia as it comes around again on the 25th revolution. And the latest uh, information from the scientific experiments placed on the lunar surface last night by the Apollo 11 crew. Our science support room here in Mission Control Center reports receiving continuous data from the passive seismic experiment. The passive seismic experiment, part of the early Apollo science experiment package, which has the acronym ESAP, recorded the astronauts' footsteps on the moon. Also sent down signals when the crew climbed up the ladder back into the Eagle and recorded a strong signal when the expended portable life support backpacks and other pieces of equipment were jettisoned out Eagle's front hatch. 
Let's rejoin the conversation. Uh, one more uh, late checklist change there on uh, rendezvous radar position for liftoff. Over. It's on uh, page uh, surface 57. Roger, go ahead. Okay, on surface 57 there and your uh, verb 21, noun 73. Trunnion, uh, leave it at 180. The shaft, we'd like uh, 335. Over. Roger, understand. Shaft 335. Uh, Roger, and uh, if the uh, steerable uh, doesn't uh, quite hack it on uh, liftoff, it looks like the forward Omni is good uh, for about 30 to 60 seconds after liftoff. And then the aft Omni antenna is good for the uh, rest of the ascent. Over. Roger, copy. We've got uh, two angles here at uh, three minutes in ascent. Uh, would you confirm those? Uh, pitch 134 and yaw minus 32. Over. Tranquility uh, base. Uh, Roger, we verify those are correct. This is Apollo Control. Here in Mission Control Center, Flight Director Glenn Lenny is polling the various positions here in the control room on their readiness to uh, go ahead with the ascent on this next pass as the command module comes around the moon and we're some 53 minutes now away from ascent. Meanwhile, back at the uh, scientific experiment situation, Another attempt is scheduled today to shoot another laser beam up to the laser retro reflector, which is the other part of the experiment package left on the moon. The seismic experiment will continue to record and send back measurements to mission control and will probably receive its strongest signal when the ascent engine ignites and starts Eagle on its way into lunar orbit and rendezvous with Columbia. There's considerable amount of conversation going on with the crew, uh, even though command module or Columbia is behind the moon at this time, uh, rather than disconnect the air ground line and uh, be in a tape playback mode, we'll leave the circuit up all the way through to uh, loss of signal on the next rev when both spacecraft will go behind the moon. At 123 hours, 29 minutes, and standing by, this is Apollo Control. Tranquility Base, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, 
Roger. Uh, Eagle's looking uh, real fine to us down here. Uh, we have a fairly high confidence that we know uh, the position of the limb. However, uh, it is possible that we may have a plane change. But the uh, in the worst case, it would be uh, up to uh, 30 feet per second. And of course, we don't expect that at all. Okay. Uh, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base, since we're uh, still got plenty of time, I think I'll go ahead and uh, recycle on this uh, 604. Tranquility, uh, Roger, that's okay with us. And uh, we assume that uh, the primary canister is still aboard. Is this correct? We have uh, one primary canister on board and one secondary. Uh, the other primary is uh, all out in front of the uh, Z plus Z pad. Over. Uh, Roger, we copy. Thank you. Things looks consistent today. Hey, that's affirmative. Bye, guys. Looking great.
Uh, Houston, did you copy uh, 905 and are you looking at uh, 93 over? Tranquility Base, uh, it's beautiful. Okay, we'll proceed. Uh, Roger. I know where the star is. I'm not sure the pings knows where gravity is. <laughs> okay.
This is Apollo Control. We're some three minutes from acquisition time for Columbia as it comes around on the 25th Lunar Revolution. We've had uh, acquisition with Columbia some 26 minutes away from ignition time on the ascent burn, which will place Eagle back into lunar orbit. Here we go. Delta, over. Columbia, Houston, uh, Roger, Loud, and Clear. And uh, if you'd like to take it down, we have the latest uh, position of uh, Tranquility Base, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, it's just west of West Crater, uh, Juliet point five slash 7.7. Over. Understand it is just west of the crater, which is at Juliet point five and 7.7. Is that correct? Columbia, Houston, that is correct. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, Tranquility Base, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, because of the uh, lower load with the uh, rendezvous radar off, we'd like to have battery five and six on the line now. Uh, one and three off. Over. It work. Uh, Roger, thank you. This is Apollo Control here in Mission Control. The lunar orbit chart on the center plot board has disappeared. We now have the various uh, scribing plotters projecting on the center plot board to show the ascent. All of these lines and the various colors that are described on by the three sources of uh, primary guidance system, the abort guidance system, and the manned spaceflight network all mean something to flight dynamics officer. Let's rejoin the conversation. Find us. Roger. Uh, Roger, we copy him.
Columbia and uh, Tranquility. I'll give you a mark at uh, 20 minutes to go, and that's in about uh, 20 seconds. Tranquility uh, Base Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, just a reminder here, we want to make sure you leave the rendezvous radar circuit breakers pulled. However, we want the rendezvous radar mode switch in LGC, just as it is on surface 5-9. Uh, okay. Tranquility Base, uh, Houston. Roger, go ahead. Uh, Roger, our guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. Uh, Roger. This is Apollo Control. We have confirmation on the ground that the ascent propulsion system propellant tanks have been pressurized. Uh, Houston Tranquility, we're not sure that uh, we got uh, number two tank to fire. It's still uh, showing a high pressure. Uh, Roger, we uh, confirm that. Uh, try it again. Okay, we'll go to number two this time. No, Roger, we, we concur. Roger, no fire.
This is Apollo Control. The network controller just informed the flight director that items called battle shorts have been installed around the network. These are mechanical uh, shorts of uh, critical uh, power supplies and transmitters and the like so that uh, before they will go offline they will actually burn up in critical uh, phases of the mission. They uh, want to get as much data as possible through the burn. So for that reason any uh, circuit breaking uh, function of the equipment is inhibited with uh, these battle shorts. They're not a piece of apparel. In the upcoming ascent, some 14 minutes from now, almost 5,000 pounds of propellant will be run through the ascent engine to propel the lunar module upper stage or ascent stage to uh, velocity, a total velocity of 6,068 feet per second. Go through a vertical rise phase at, in about 50 seconds after lift over, we'll be, lift off will begin pitching over and uh, some 168 miles downrange will be inserted into lunar orbit at about 60,000 feet above the surface with an apolloon of uh, approximately 45 nautical miles half a revolution later on the far side of the moon. We'll continue to monitor air ground here. We're some one hour away from loss of signal with the lunar module after its insertion. Eagle now 13 minutes away from 13 minutes, 23 seconds away from ascent ignition. 124 hours, 8 minutes. Ground elapsed time in the mission. Apollo Control standing by. Uh, it looks like uh, there's very little difference between the two. Uh, Roger. We've got number 2 reading uh, 30, 50, and number 1 is reading... Uh, uh, 3,000 and it dropped down to 2,990. So uh, I'm not sure that uh, it's really indicative that it Okay, I assume we're, uh, we'll go for liftoff and we'll proceed with the uh, SNP. Uh, Roger, that's correct. And we'll go ahead and watch tank two. If it doesn't, uh, tank two doesn't decrease, we'll tell you to close the ascent feeds and open the shutoffs over. Feeds are open and shut off for close. Roger. And we got the cross feed on.
Tranquility Base, uh, a little less than 10 minutes here. Everything looks good, and we assume the variables of track mode auto. Roger, it is in track mode auto. Uh, Roger. And both ED batteries are go. Tranquility, uh, Houston, Roger.
Great scale uh, 25. At translation, four jet. Balance couple on. DTCA jet. Stop push button reset. Board to board stage reset. Dead band minimum. At control, remote control. Remote control auto. Crew of Eagle going through their pre ignition checklist. The team is standing by for two minutes to uh, go to guidance steering in the eggs. Houston, uh, you're looking good to us. Roger. Guidance computer aboard the LIM, or aboard Eagle, will be loaded with the program 12 powered ascent guidance. We'll continue to monitor now at 3 minutes 12 seconds away from ignition as Crew of Eagle goes through their pre-launch checklist. Two minutes, mark two minus t minus two minutes. Got your guidance steering in the ag. Guidance reports both navigation systems on Eagle are looking good. Whiskey blanks. Got that answer code. Very 
very quiet ride. There's that one crater on there. Thousand feet high, eighty feet uh, per second vertical rise. Eagle Houston, to request manual start override. Roger. Twenty six hundred feet altitude. Yeah. Roger, mighty fine. Seven hundred, one fifty up, beautiful. Nine thousand. AAG degrees uh, within a foot per second. Eagle Houston, uh, you're looking good at two. Ping, Zags, and Mitzvah, all agree. And that's a thousand. 170 up, beautiful. 14 tons. And a foot per second again, Ags to Ping. Like it's holding good. Houston. Roger, we heard. Great. 1400, 185. Aldrin is reading the horizontal velocity first and then the vertical velocity. It's now 1424 feet per second vertical uh, velocity, 187 vertical velocity. You go, Houston, uh, your goal is three minutes. Everything's looking good. Is it? Great on h -Dot. Coming up through. This is h -Dot Max now. Right down, you have one. Roger. Right now approaching 32,000 feet. Here you go, Houston, uh, four minutes. You're going right down the track. Everything's great. Velocity approaching 2,500 feet per second. That's the beam uh, off to our right now. Roger. Some 120 miles to go until insertion. Sources are agreeing quite closely here. The three color 
plot board on the front of mission control here is almost uh, superimposed as the, each of the three colors are scribed on the scribing plotter. Houston, uh, you're still looking mighty fine. Roger, good agreement in uh, Delta V to go and both ag things. Uh, Roger. One minute to go in the burn. 4,482 feet per second. Horizontal velocity. At 800 to go. Houston, uh, trim residuals. Showing a paraloon of 9.1 nautical miles, apaloon 47.2 nautical miles on the pings. All three systems are go. Cutoff velocity showing about 55, 37 feet per second, uh, plus or minus a foot or so on, the, on each of the three systems. There you go, Houston tram looks good.
here in Mission Control, the uh, scribing plotters showing the velocity and height. Here we go again. Let's proceed with uh, T-52 uh, as control the scribing plotters have been replaced with the lunar orbit tracking chart showing uh, eagle behind spider some 20 degrees in longitude flight operations director Chris Kraft commented that he felt like some 500 million people around the world were helping push eagle off the moon and back into orbit we're continuing to monitor Transmissions between the ground and Eagle and Columbia. Apollo Control standing by. Houston, request uh, poo and accept, and we'll give you a good old lamb vector, over. Eagle Houston, uh, you can go ahead and turn your updated link switch off. Uh, 
Roger, it's off. Yeah, Roger. This is Apollo Control. During uh, the ascent phase, the heart rates on the Eagle crew reached 90 for Neil Armstrong, 120 for Buzz Aldrin. They're now back down in the 80s. We're some uh, 28 minutes, 15 seconds from loss of signal with uh, Columbia, 29 minutes, 52 seconds away from loss of signal on Eagle. Delta H is 15.5. Eagle Houston, Roger, uh, 15.5. And a maneuver of... And a maneuver of 51.3. Roger, we copy. And Eagle, I have to Omni, over. and a blind uh, try low bit rate. Over. Roger, low bit rate. Uh, I've got uh, 3.8 uh, signal strength. Over.
Eagle, uh, Houston. Roger, go ahead. Uh, Roger, we saw a uh, very slight jump in cabin and food pressure there. Could you verify the cabin repress valve is closed? Okay, it's closed. Uh, Roger, and we've got about one minute uh, to be for where you ought to be uh, radar tracking, and we've lost uh, data with you. Okay. Do I gate you? Okay, 
Houston, if you have time, pitch 162, yaw minus 16. Clear now. This is Houston. Roger, would you tell uh, Eagle his Y dot is minus 1.0? Over. Uh, Roger, Eagle. Columbia says your Y dot is minus 1.0. Over. Roger, Houston, we got that. Thank you. Uh, Roger, and uh, you can go to high pit right now. Uh, Eagle can. Yeah, 
Mike agrees very closely in pointing uh, direction. Uh, Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, Mike, you can go ahead and get as many uh, VHF and sexist marks uh, as you can here in this period of time.
Uh, Eagle and Columbia. About one minute to LOS there on uh, Columbia. It looks like uh, we have about 51.5 uh, for CSI, and we tend to confirm uh, your Y dot and break for Eagle. Uh, verify VHF Bravo transmitter is off. Roger, VHF Bravo is off. Houston, uh, recommend AF Omni, and uh, are you go for CSI so we can uh, let Columbia know. Over. Back to work, go for CSI. Columbia, Houston, did you copy Eagle as go for CSI? This is Apollo Control. Columbia has gone behind the moon. Still a little over a minute left until Eagle goes behind the moon. We'll catch these last few minutes of tracking and any possible conversation. Houston, uh, we'll see you coming around the other side. Your AOS times are one minute ahead of the flight plan. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control. We have had loss of signal with Eagle. Quite scratchy as Eagle went over the hill to complete the 25th lunar revolution as it gets to the midpoint on the lunar far side. Ascent burn uh, just completed. Uh, went quite well on time at 124 hours, 22 minutes, zero seconds ground elapsed time. Coming up on this rev, uh, approximately 10 minutes from now, as a matter of fact, will be the concentric sequence initiate maneuver, CSI, which will raise the Eagle's paraloon to some uh, 45 nautical miles. Eagle now is in a orbit measuring 9.4 nautical miles at insertion or paraloon and 46.7 at Apolloon. This CSI maneuver will be made approximately at Apolloon, therefore the effect takes place 180 degrees later and has the effect of raising Paralloon to the desired 45 nautical miles. This maneuver will take place at 125 hours 19 minutes 34.7 seconds. It will have a uh, delta V or velocity change of 51.5 feet per second. All of these maneuvers, incidentally, in the rendezvous sequence by Eagle, will be made by the using the uh, reaction control system of Eagle. Following uh, the CSI at 126 hours 18 minutes zero seconds and 9.2 foot per second 
burn, uh, probably mostly a radial burn uh, at 126 hours, 18 minutes. We'll twist the Eagle's orbit to an equal distance from the orbit of Columbia, what they call a constant delta height, or CDH maneuver. At 126 hours, 57 minutes, zero, zero seconds, terminal phase initiate, TPI. In this maneuver, the crew visually thrust along the line of sight toward Columbia. When the line of sight is some 27 degrees above the local horizontal, this uh, maneuver will have a magnitude of about 24.9 feet per second and in turn it raises the Apolloon to 60.5 nautical miles which is approximately the uh, altitude Columbia is orbiting. Terminal phase finalization TPF 127 hours 39 minutes 39.2 seconds this is the start time for a series of small burns, which uh, are a combination of uh, mid-course corrections and velocity match maneuvers to bring Eagle in with Columbia and uh, match the velocity so that the station keep for a short period for photography, etc., and move on into docking at approximately 128 hours ground elapsed time. In all of these maneuvers, Mike Collins aboard Columbia is spring-loaded to do what is called a mirror image maneuver. Approximately a minute after the Eagle is scheduled to make its maneuver. And if for some reason Eagle cannot make the maneuver, Collins would do the exact same maneuver only in reverse so that uh, Columbia would in, would in effect uh, begin a CSM active rendezvous with Eagle. As Eagle went over the hill on the 25th revolution, uh, the velocity was being measured at 5,410 feet per second. Eagle's weight, somewhat lighter than when it started out in excess of 32,000 pounds, it's now uh, shrunk to some 5,885 pounds. Some uh, 39 minutes, 20 seconds away from acquisition of Columbia. 41 minutes, 45 seconds from acquisition of Eagle as the two vehicles come around on the 26th Lunar Revolution. The crew will likely describe how the CSI burn went, which uh, is some five minutes away from this point. And at uh, 125 hours, 14 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control.
This is Apollo Control. 125 hours, 52 minutes around the lapse time. Less than a minute away from acquisition of the spacecraft Columbia. Coming around on the near side of the moon in the 26th revolution. Some three minutes, 11 seconds away from Eagle's appearance on the lunar front side. Stand by here for uh, word that we have acquired data and uh, voice link. Spacecraft communicator Ron Evans is standing by for AOS so that he can pass some information to the crew of the two spacecraft. We have AOS of the uh, spacecraft Columbia. Columbia Houston, I uh, heard you talking to Eagle. I assume you have uh, calm with Eagle now. Columbia, Houston, uh, you're very weak. Uh, say again. Columbia, Houston, uh, you're about one by, uh, just barely make you out, Un can't understand.
All right, Houston, this is Eagle, over. Hey, Eagle, uh, Houston, loud and clear. Uh, Columbia was very weak. Uh, we were unable to read him. All right, sir, we saw you come up over the horizon, and it looks like uh, you had a laser operating. Uh, could you confirm that? Uh, Eagle, uh, Houston, uh, stand by. We'll check it. And Eagle, uh, Houston, can you give us a burn report? Roger, stand by. Okay, the CSI burn was uh, on schedule time at one two five one nine three four seven zero. Fifty one point five feet per second was our solution. Uh, after uh, chasing residuals a little bit, we ended up with uh, minus point two, plus point seven, and minus point one. And in the ags at that time, we had uh, plus point four, plus point nine, and plus point three. Eagle Houston, uh, we copy. Uh, any plane change over? No, there was no plane change on CSI, and uh, CSM had uh, a 2.3 foot per second burn. We had a 2.9, and we elected to uh, uh, postpone that over. Uh, Roger, we copy. Eagle, thank you.